Hi, true crime fans. True Crime Tuesday. It is May 3rd, and our third case is uh, a Murdoch. Um, or if you're from South Kekalak, the uh, Murdoch. Murdoch. Um, although it's spelled like Murda case. Um, again, and it's if you looked at it, you'd think it was Alex, but South Kekalak, it's Alec. So, Alec Murdoch. Um, from the Low Country, y'all. So, um, we've paired case three with Menage a Trois. It, it's a, it's a red blend. Um, I'm not really a fan of Menage a Trois or reds, but we'll give it a go. Um, I chose Menage a Trois because Trois is three, as you may know, and there's three big things that happened in the Murdoch case. So, quick review for those of you who are new. Um, Alec Murdoch was a good old boy lawyer from a lawyer family. His family, in fact, had been the prosecutor, although they called them, uh, I believe, the solicitor for Hampton County in South Kakalak, which is South Carolina, um, for the past almost 100 years. Like, it was his great granddaddy, then his granddaddy, then his daddy, and then him. Um, and his brothers are also lawyers. Like, and his son went to law school. Although, cheers to you, Buster. Maybe you broke the chain by getting out of it. Mm, Okie. Who knew that not going, like, getting through law school would be a positive thing at this point, right, Buster? Um, so while we're talking about him was he burst onto the news for all of us in true crime last june when his wife maggie and his son paul had been uh murdered began at one of their many properties moselle which was a hunting lodge at the time everybody was like this very big family you know, you think he's a prosecutor, must have been somebody he put away, and blah, blah, blah. But if you were from South Kakalak, you would have heard rumblings prior to the murders that their marriage wasn't going so well, that Maggie was living somewhere else, and everybody down there in the low country and pretty much all over South Carolina was aware that the boy, Paul, the younger son, had had a horrible time. There had been a boating accident. He seemed to be allegedly very inebriated and apparently there was a fix to try to get him out of trouble and there was a civil suit still going on because somebody had died um oh why can't her i'm sorry her last name she's well let's just call her ms beach um w w was killed in a boating accident and it seems as if paul was you know at the wheel and had been acting erratically by all accounts of people on the boat and right away Alex's dad and Alex ended up at the hospital trying to get kids to like basically walking into hospital rooms it was nuts so we after the murders learned about this accident and then so can we attribute it to that and then there was like another death had been attributed um, this after they had been like looking around they opened they reopened a case of this um lgbtq uh known young man who was openly out but you know south kakalak down south not always cool he had been killed on a road out there kind of near the moselle property but he had been his death didn't look right and his mom and sister were always like it's not right um stephen smith so they reopened his death investigation and that had been like in 2000 like 18 or 19 so like they're all these like okay wait how does that tie into the murdochs and then <laughs> i forget which came first there was a so prior to all of this apparently alec knew and it was coming down that they were looking into his finances and he knew he was doing all these dirty dealings with insurance problem like he was I don't know how he was both the prosecutor, but he also was part of a private, uh, you know, his family's firm, and they would sue people, and he was moving, he would basically do what, if you're watching um, the Housewives show, uh, 
you know, Erica Jane, her husband, and all the shenanigans he got into by being a personal injury lawyer and but taking, like they get the money, they're supposed to dis distribute it right away to the victims, but instead they kept it. Okay, same, allegedly, that airline case. Uh, same sort of thing that we find out was going on with Alex. So basically, his wife and son are murdered. And everybody's like, wait a minute, what? And then they open up this other murder. Oh, and his... And there had been a death at his at that Moselle property of his longtime housekeeper, Glory Satterfield. And they started looking into that. And the money problems. And everything, like, exploded. And then, oh my God, he tried to... It seemed like he said he tried to hurt himself, like unalive himself, by hiring this guy who worked for him, but the guy has a different story, and he didn't really have a mark on him, but he was life flighted out of there. It So, all sorts of craziness, all sorts of crimes of all different types. So, just this week, here's the update. Number one, get ready. This is why it's the menage a trois rod, because number one, high impact splat, high impact philosophy, velocity splatter was reported to have been on his shirt, which means or indicates that um, Alec was at the property and during the crimes. I'm not saying he committed the crimes, but so that's crazy. So they said he had to have been near the victims when they were hurt. Now, at the time, he had said he was with his dying father, but uh, the second big part of this was not just that we have some forensic evidence, but... If you can believe this, they found, or I mean, I'm sure they knew, but we're finding out, there were text messages from, like, trying to lure Maggie out to the Moselle property. Like, I, I don't, we don't know exactly what he said, but, so, we thought, I mean, at the first you're like, oh, the mom and the son were at the hunting property, the dad was visiting his dying father, and then uh, all this craziness happened, and then he came back after visiting with his dying father in hospice and found this mess, right? Because he made this horrific 911 call. But now, it seems, like we didn't know at the time, they were divorcing, there was all these money problems, and she was hesitant and had talked to a number of her friends, should I go out there? Should I go see him? Now, true crime friends, what did we say before? Um, if you've been around with me a few weeks, we talked about this with the Casey Carley case, and there's been a number of them. But do not go meet somebody that you're having personal problems with without other people around you. Do not. Especially if you're like having that feeling, should I do this? Don't do it. That's what we can learn from this. Again, we're not victim shaming. It's shaming. There is no way Maggie could have known. But she did have a gut feeling. And now, I mean, mm, mm. So she was at their beach house. And she was aware there was a huge money problem. She was, she was seeing divorce attorneys. So, before she could get into all that, I guess he thought he'd take care of a problem. Now, I'm going to have to, not only, so he lured my, lured, that's a hard word to say if you're dyslexic or anybody, I think the L and the E and the R together are hard. He lured, that makes it easier, Maggie out there. Now we find out Paul went out there because his friend's dog had been injured and was staying at the kennels, and he promised to go look after his friend's dog. So, well, we could say Paul didn't have the best judge of, like, <laughs> of best judgment when it came. He seems to have an alcohol problem, allegedly. I don't know. This is speculation, but... You know, he went out there 
So if you remember the crime scene, and if you don't, let me just tell you, what was interesting was they said there were two different types of guns used and one was from the property. So what if Paul doesn't know that his dad's coming out there, his mom doesn't know Paul's coming out there, and let's say Paul and Maggie are outside discussing whatever, and, uh, not Paul and Maggie, sorry, Alec goes to talk to Maggie, and there's whatever, and then Paul, who wasn't supposed to be there, hears this, you know, or sees the problem, and he grabs a gun from the property and tries to defend his mom, and instead... And that would make, that would, that would somehow make sense of why Alex's 911 call was so emotional because maybe he never intended to have to take out his kid. I, allegedly. My speculation, we don't know. Okay, so the luring, the, um, uh, gun splatter, the, the forensics. Third issue of this was, again, this is very hard to follow, but there's been more financial misdeeds found out. Something related to people who had lost their funeral home, wanted to buy it back, Alec had lended them the money, and they're like saying, no, no, we paid him back. But they're the people who bought it, who got the money from Alec. Their son was one of his victims who um, Alec had represented and was supposed to, you know, give him, uh, he won in court over $600,000 and the son never saw it. So 